Hey everyone, today we're going to actually find out if you save any real power using the T-branded CPUs from Intel. So what I already have in my media server is an i5-7500 and what we're going to try today is an i5-7600T, which is just about the same. If we look at it, they both have four cores, both have four threads as well. Yeah, four cores, four threads. Um, the 7600T clocks in at 100 megahertz less. That's it. Uh, same amount of L2 and L3 cache. And here's the big difference. The TDP, or thermal design power, for the 7500 is 65 watts, whereas the 7600T is only 35 watts. So most of the time my server sits idle. It's not doing a lot of work, so we want to see if the idle... Uh, power draw is a lot less on the CPU or if it's nothing And yes, this one says Intel confidential someone sold it to me on eBay I'm not going to tell you who we're just get over it and big deal. This should still be a 7600t At least that's how it's sold. So let's stop talking. Let's go over to the server and let's get some baseline uh, information first uh, the power draw and when it's idle when it's I run a stress test on it and then we'll go ahead and swap out CPUs to put this one in there, do it again and see if there's actually any big difference. Okay, so now we have the server all spun down. If we look at the hard drives on Open Media Vault, you'll see they're all spun down off this side here. Let's double check real quick again. Yep, they're all in standby mode. So if we go on over here, and we take a look right over here this little white thing in the back here that's actually monitoring power usage from the server and on Hubitat it's pulling the information down and we can see right from here that we're running about 40 41 watts and it's pretty consistent right now because all the drives have been spun down for a while so that is our baseline when this thing is fully sleeping that's what we get now if we also go into net data here and go to CPU, CPU frequency. You can see it's still doing a little bit, but it's basically hanging out around 800 megahertz. Maybe one, two, two gigahertz every once in a while, but it's nowhere near doing anything. And if we look down here, we look at the sleep states, you can see we're talking 97, 95%, 97% C8 sleep, the deepest sleep we can get. Sorry, right over here. You can see 95, 96%. So let's go ahead. Now that we have our baseline of 41 watts for full sleep, let's run a stress test for five minutes and see what it pops up as. So let's go ahead and start this. And we should be able to go over here. And see, nope, the CPU just jumped up to 100%, so now we are stressing. And if we go to CPUs, and you can see all four CPUs are pinned. And we check the frequency. Yep, they're all running at 3.6 gigahertz, all four cores. If we come on over just a little bit more here. Yep, they're all running at 3.6 gigahertz. So let's let that run. And if we go to our logs... Right now, it looks like 69 watts. So even on a CPU that has a 65 TDP, we're only seeing 40, 50, 30 watt increase in power usage, at least from the wall itself. Okay, and that's the end of our stress test. Actually, six minutes, because I put in 360 seconds instead of 300. No big deal. So now we're back down to normal. And let's take a look at our power logs. So we can see here's our 41, and we started 69 watts, 69 watts, peaked at 70 a little bit, 69 watts, and we're back down to 41 for a little bit of a fluctuation there at the end. But so we're only talking about a 30 watt difference between full idle and fully working that CPU. So just for the heck of it, let's take a quick look at the temperature of the CPU. So we started out at 87 degrees Fahrenheit and we topped out around 113 degrees Fahrenheit. That's it. So let's 
also compare that with the other CPU. So let's shut this down, bring the server on over to the table, switch it on over real quick to the 7600T and rerun these tests. Okay, so let's get this out of the way now. And let's refocus. And you can see it's an i5-7500 that was in there. So let's switch it up. Okay, that's my pin one on that chip. Get over here. In with that one. And the stuff, same stuff that was on there before, cryonaut. So that's what we're going to use again. This way we're, we are as consistent as possible here. Okay. So let's go ahead and move this back on over, hook it back up, get all the hard drives to spin down, and we'll take our readings again. Okay, we are back now. Server is remounted over here. And we are taking a quick look. Let's take a look real quick. Open Media Vault, test again. All drives are sleeping, and this is on the 7600T processor. And if we look at our logs, Wait for that last drive to spin down, and then it spun down. So we're at 40 to 39.9. So we've saved a total of one watt, one whole watt. That's it between the 7500 and the 7600T at pure idle. And just to make sure it's at pure idle, see, no CPU load whatsoever. And if you can actually read right here, load one, 0, 0.00, the one minute load. There's no load for the last 10 minutes on this server. So let's go ahead and do the stress test now. So, okay, we should be running the stress test. Yep, there goes the CPU up to 100%. And let's see what the power jumps up to. We'll get our next reading here in a few seconds. And we went from 40 to 69 watts. So again, we're talking a 30 watt difference. Let's get a few more readings, but right now I don't see any difference between the two CPUs. At least not in the desktop form. 68.6 .6 watts. And back down to 68.8. Yeah, we're, we're floating right around 69 watts, which is what the 7500 was actually running at. So there's absolutely no freaking difference whatsoever, at least in a regular desktop environment. I don't know if there's some special programming involved with using it in a small form factor computer and using the uh, CTDP down option. There's a, some crazy special option uh, available on this CPU, but in a regular desktop environment, there's absolutely no difference whatsoever. So if you're building a box, don't bother with the T-branded Intel CPUs. They're just not worth it. So there you have it. In a desktop environment, at least, a T-branded Intel CPU does absolutely nothing to save power. It's not even worth it. So if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give me a thumbs down. I'll see you next video.